Hello everyone and welcome back to DBX Labs. In today's video, we will be testing out the difference between holding your breath with 21% atmospheric oxygen and holding your breath with 100% oxygen. While we conduct these tests, I'll be measuring my blood oxygen levels with a pulse oximeter and hopefully by using this we'll get a rough idea of if supplemental oxygen actually makes a difference in these trials. The first test will be a control test, testing just to see how long I can hold my breath with atmospheric oxygen. You guys are going to have to trust that I can't breathe through my nose with this thing on. So I got right around 2 minutes and 35 seconds, and that's pretty average for me. I've gotten above and below many times before, and it's really something that you build up to because it's really just an endurance training to test your body's tolerance to CO2. When you hold your breath for a long time, it's not the lack of oxygen that your body reflexes to. It's the increase of CO2 in your blood. CO2 dissolves in the blood to form carbonic acid, and this decreases the pH of the blood to levels where it becomes uncomfortable. If you can train yourself to have a higher tolerance to that low pH in your blood, then you can hold your breath for a longer period of time without becoming uncomfortable. I'd say most people can make it to the three minute mark with just a fair amount of training, but when you go beyond that, you likely would need some pretty good cardiovascular endurance to make it to four or five minutes. As you could see, I was down to 70% oxygen levels in just the time that I was holding my breath. Now I'm going to compare the control to a test where I breathe 100% oxygen prior to beginning the test. Three minutes 24 seconds and I was at 99% all the way so that just goes to show that if you're on pure oxygen and you feel the CO2 kicking in you're still on pure oxygen and you still got a lot of oxygen in your lungs to go my nose is extremely red from that thing that's 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 not a loose grabber right there that's actually pretty impressive. I calculated it and I expected this to happen, but it's just kind of odd to see that on this, it reads 99 even when you feel like I need to breathe really bad. It's been a couple of days since I last recorded segments of this video, and in that time, I've heavily considered what the data from my experimentation actually means. The most notable thing that I found was just how rapidly my blood oxygen levels dropped off towards the very end of the atmospheric oxygen breath hold. I really expected the blood oxygen levels to go down to the low 90s, but nowhere near the 70s. Then again, the reader on my finger only went down to the 70s several seconds after I had taken a breath, which just shows you the delay between taking a breath and the blood in my arm traveling to my finger. Another thing that really surprised me was just how high my blood oxygen levels were throughout the entirety of the 100% oxygen breath hold. 
They never dropped below 99 for the entirety of the breath hold, even though I felt like I was completely out of air. Herein lies the problem. If you take a breath, you're no longer doing a breath hold, but that's the only way to get the CO2 out of the body. So what's a way that we can take a breath without actually taking a breath and filter off all the CO2? The answer to that is called a rebreather. Now this may be one of the most janky things I've made in quite a while, but it does serve its purpose. The rebreather creates a closed system where I can breathe out and back in through it, filtering my breath of CO2 and water vapor. Calcium chloride right here filters my breath of water vapor, and that's because it's highly hygroscopic. And right over here, I have a whole bunch of calcium hydroxide, water, and a small amount of sodium hydroxide to catalyze the formation of carbonates absorbing CO2. Of course, we don't want any of these caustic chemicals in our lungs, so this whole mess right here houses a respirator cartridge that filters out most everything. I've yet to use this thing outside of making it, so if I had to guess how long I might be able to hold my breath on a 100% pure oxygen starting breath, I think that by blowing through this, I could get myself up to at least six or seven minutes. Now it's time to put it to the test. Ah. Well, I made it to five minutes, although I think that if I really pushed it, I could have gotten somewhere closer to six. I could definitely tell that a lot of the gas that I started with in my lungs was gradually depleted as it got absorbed and converted into carbonates. I think this was kind of unsettling, having less than even half the amount of gas in my lungs, even though it was all pure oxygen nearly, and the reader was still giving me 99%. It was kind of a weird sensation, and I couldn't push it any longer, I guess. I underestimated how much energy would be exhausted by blowing up the balloon again and again, and I also underestimated how often I would have to breathe out to deplete my CO2. I think that in the first and second trials I conducted the other day, I was mainly exhausting energy just by keeping heart pumping and bodily functions running, whereas when I conducted the trial today, a lot of the energy in my body was being converted into muscular energy for blowing up a balloon. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.